Hello and welcome back to our reassembly ship fighting tournament series where every week we put 16 ships head to head for your viewing pleasure. So before we start today's tournament, let's look at the rules we have. So the first rule we have is no fly command modules. Next we are able to use all faction parts. The max P you can have on a ship is 6,192, thank you random number generator. You can use nukes, your P will not be matched with your competitors. You can use Tinkerel guns, but you cannot have a spinner. So with that in mind, let's just jump on down to Venom with the ships. Alright, so our first competitor today will be the Shredder. The second one will be the Strike Scout, and moving on we have the Harbinger, the Heavy Missile Ship, the Cruiser, the B-Box, the Station, the 10 Minute, the Absolution Class 18 Mini Spiky Pencil, the Fighter Mew, the Mini Death Ball, the Death Ball, the Box of Doom, the Factory Ship, the Project Loda, and the Just Name It. Alright, well with that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so for our first match, we're going to be doing the Cruiser versus the Harbringer. Alright, so taking a look at the Cruiser, we have three gauze weapons in the middle for their primary spinal mounted weaponry on this ship. And then we have some point defense uh, burst lasers, it appears. A couple of other cannons for uh, close quarters combat and a decent amount of thrusters, but the immense amount of armor on this will probably make it a rather slow craft. Moving over to the Harbinger, it looks like we have two nukes, a uh, few little guns in the front, no shields whatsoever, just like the cruiser, and also uh, not very many thrusters with a lot of armor relative to it. Alright, so this should be interesting and slow, and let's get right into it. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Okay, so the Harbinger has just sent out its nukes, and the cruiser is trying to get in with those frontal cannons. And the Harbinger sends out a nuke and just finishes off the cruiser. So now we're heading into round two. Harbinger just sent out its nukes, and the cruiser is moving in, trying to take away those nukes with its point defense, but it does not seem to be killing it. There are a couple of nukes still left on the Harbinger, but cruiser takes it out before they're able to land. Okay, now we're into the final round, and the cruiser is rushing in towards the Harbinger. Harbinger just shot out both of its nukes, but they have both missed. Looks like the Harbinger just shot out another round of nukes. Those are both circling in towards the cruiser, but the cruiser finishes it off before they hit. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next round with the straight station and the just name it. Alright, so the station looks like a smaller Terran ship that has a lot of armor and a square with cut off corners. And it also looks like it has all of its sources on the inside and some shields around the outer ring. It looks like it uses a, quite the variety of weaponry with railguns and also missiles and plasma cannons and point defense and basically everything. Alright, and heading over to the Just Name It, it looks like they opted for quite the opposite, no armor approach. Now this seems to rely heavily on its shields while also having four spinal mounted weapons and a lot of turrets. It also has a few missiles in the back with very little point defense other than in the front. So this should be interesting to see how this goes. The thrusters are not as plentiful in the just name it, but the station has much more mass, so both of them should be relatively medium in speed. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, let's see, they're both rushing in towards each other. The station sends off its first flurry of missiles, and now the Just Name It has just gotten its main cannons within range, but the station finishes it off right as it gets its shield punctured. Okay, the Just Name It is just get hitting the station with its long range cannon, but now the station's throwing out the missiles. Oh, the missiles have gone through the Just Name It shield, it's tearing away at it, and the station wins again. Okay, the station is going to be the winner for that round. Okay, for the next round we're going to be doing the factory ship versus the b-box all right so looking at the factory ship we have yet another ter or we have another sentinel ship which has a decent amount of armor with some depots on the inside which will regenerate quickly also serving as a form of armor we have a nuke in the middle and we have six of these flurry missiles we also have a little bit of thrusters so it should be relatively slow and we also have a lot of other guns on the inside. And then moving over to the B-Box, we have uh, a little bit of armor on the outsides, but none in the middle or in the middle of the back. That's probably so these drones can get out, but we'll see if that's the downfall of the B-Box in this competition. This also launches shards, and it has a lot of 
auto defense turrets. So we'll see how this does. Go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, let's see. They're both rushing each other. The factory ship just sent out the nuke towards the B-Box, and the B-Box is down. That was quick. Okay, the factory ship just sent out its nuke again. You got the B-Box sending out its drones, but the nuke was just too powerful for the B-Box. Factory ship wins the round. Next, we have the Shredder versus the Strike Scout. All right, so it looks like we have yet another Terran ship, the Shredder, and it looks like it has a lot of unguided spinal-mounted rockets as its primary gun in the very center of its ship. It has a decent amount of shielding and rather thin armor, but at least it has some. And there are also some other secondary weapons on board. The thruster count is actually relatively high for this size of ship, and so it should be moving at a decent speed compared to its competition. The Strike Scout, which has pretty much no thrusters considering how much armor this thing has. It also has relatively low amount of guns as there are only seven or no six on board but it does have two giant nukes so this should be interesting to see who can win this competition and we'll go ahead and jump right into it okay so the strike shot just sent out its nukes and the shredder shreds it before they even touch Okay, so now getting into round two, Strikes Out sent out the nuke. Shredder is hitting with those main cannons up front, but it doesn't seem to be hitting the Strike Scout too, too much. Uh, so the Shredder just missed the nukes and finished off the Strike Scout. Okay, for the next round, we're going to be doing the uh, Mini Death Ball versus the Mini Spiky Pencil. All right, so we have the Mini Spiky Pencil with a very large gun in the center with the Tinkerel modifications. And it has a minimal amount of shielding and a low amount of armor as well. So this one must rely mostly on speed and maneuverability. And it also has a few little missiles to help it out and a lot of point defense. And moving over to its competition, the Mini Death Ball, it looks like this has quite a few burst lasers and also station defense lasers and a ton of missiles and this is all within a relatively thin armor sh armor shield and there's also a shield around the whole center of the death ball now this has a lot of thrusters on it so it should be very maneuverable and allowed to turn very very quickly so it should be interesting and we'll jump right into it well with the maneuverability of spiky pencil it definitely is going to be uh, interesting to see both of them moving around so let's see, the mini death ball takes out the spiky pencil within the first round. Let's see, okay, into the second round we have the spiky pencil trying to line up its main cannons on the mini death ball, but the mini death ball shreds it before it's able to line up its shot, and the mini death ball wins the round. Okay, next we have the 10 minute versus the project loader. Alright, so looking at the 10 minute, it looks like it was definitely built in 10 minutes. It features no armor whatsoever, as I guess that takes longer than 10 minutes to build, and it also features weaponry from just about every faction imaginable. It has a good amount of thrusters considering it has very low mass, and it seems to rely heavily on its three shields. Moving over to the Project Loda, it looks like it took slightly longer than 10 minutes to build as it has a nuke, uh, more thrusters, and a lot of armor. Although the armor is only attached in two places, and it's attached directly to its point defenses, which may break, resulting in the ship leaving its armor. This should be interesting to see if that happens, but this also has a lot of point defense to ward off the enemy missiles. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, let's see. So the Project Load is rushing in towards the 10 minutes, doing a lot of point defense against some of the stuff from the 10 minute ship but now the uh 10 minutes trying to find a way to get a opening into loda looks like uh 10 minutes just saying oh uh, you know i'm just out he's running away up oh, they're going towards each other looks like they're exchanging some blows and there are a couple of drones coming from the 10 minute big hit from pro uh from 10 minute to project loda and got a whole bunch of lasers coming out of 10 minute just shredding away at Loda and 10 minute wins the round. Okay, going into the second round, we got the first flurry missiles coming out of 10 minute and hit directly onto Loda. Now 10 minutes deciding to uh, run away from Loda while Loda is defending against the drones from uh, 10 minute. Looks like the 10 minute is doing very well getting a couple of quick hits on uh, Project Loda from those drones and then finishes them off with the big laser. Okay, well, Tenement will win that round, and the next round is going to be Death Ball versus Fighter Mew. 
Alright, so the Death Ball looks very similar to the Mini Death Ball as it uses the same kind of weaponry, although it has a lot more of it and significantly less thrusters. This will probably result in it being a much slower craft, but maybe its firepower will make up for it. Mo moving on to the Fighter Mew, we have the a uh, lot of thrusters, all, pretty much all of them facing forward or sideways, so it should be very fast and maneuverable moving forward. It has the two main cannons, and it looks like it relies mostly on those, as it has a little bit of shielding, very little armor, and it has a bunch of point defense as well to ward off any missiles that come at it. Although the Death Ball has a lot of them, so we'll see if it's able to keep away all those missiles. Alright, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, going into the round, we have the Fighter Mew sending off a huge burst into the Death Ball. But the Death Ball is keeping the Fighter Mew away with the uh, missile, the huge amount of missiles coming out of it. Looks like it's blowing off some pretty big chunks out of Fighter Mew. Fighter Mew is trying to recover and get off some shots, but it's just getting torn to shreds, and Death Ball wins the round with those missiles. Okay, going into round two. Mew wins round two with that main Tinkerel gun. Okay, next we have the Fighter Mew taking out Death Ball once again with that Tinkerel gun. So, next one is going to be the Box of Doom versus the Heavy Missile Ship. Alright, so looking at the Box of Doom, it looks like it has two large Tinkerel guns with very few modifications on them. It also has relatively thin armor with all of the thrusters on the outside of the armor, which is interesting. We've got the a lot of shields in here, and we've also got quite a bit of point defense and a few missiles. Heading over to the heavy missile ship, we have a lot of missiles, big surprise. Also on the two outsides we have a considerable amount of close quarters weapons. Now if the Box of Doom is fast at all, these really should not be able to hit it very much. It looks like the heavy missile ship has quite a few thrusters, so it should actually be possibly more mobile than the Box of Doom. Let's see how it pans out. Okay, so getting into the round, we have the Box of Doom shooting off those longer range cannons of the heavy missile ship, but the heavy missile sends out a huge flurry of missiles towards the Box of Doom. It, the Box of Doom is trying to ward away those missiles at that point defense, but some of them are, uh... Oh, wow, with that main cannon, Box of Doom wins the first round. Okay, now getting into round two, we have those main cannons from Box of Doom shredding away at the heavy missile ship. Looks like none of the missiles from the heavy missile ship are really touching the Box of Doom, and Box of Doom wins at that big cannon again. Okay, moving on into the next round, we have the station versus the cruiser. Alright, so for our first quarterfinals match, who do you think will be winning this one? Well, with the... Enhanced um, cannon, the Tinkerel gun on the cruiser, I think that will shred right through the armor of the station. And the station is rather slow, so I think it will be an easy target for the cruiser. I think the cruiser, yeah, no, it had three gauze cannons. It did not have a Tinkerel gun. Oh. So, since the gauze cannons shoot through, uh, through armor, but they don't ignore shields, if the shields go down on the station, I think that the cruiser will probably have it. Although, with the limited amount of short-range cannons on the cruiser, this should be interesting if it gets into a close quarters match. So I'm going to go with the cruiser on this. So going into the first round, we see the them both going towards each other. We got the missiles coming out of the station. Looks like the shields have just been punctured on the station, and the cruiser wins with those gauze cannons on the front. Okay, well, looks like the station is going to be sending out those first flurry of missiles. Cruiser is taking all the hits to the side from those missiles, but now he's trying to chip away with that main weapon, and the cruiser wins the second round. Okay, moving on to the next round, we have the Shredder versus the Factory Ship. Alright, so we have the Terran Shredder versus the Sentinel Factory Ship. Which one do you think will win? Well, with the immense firepower of the Shredder, I think that that will tear through the majority of the factory ship's armor because it doesn't have any shields. So I think the Shredder is going to win this round. I think you're right. As long as the Shredder stays away from the factory ship's nuke, it should be okay. Okay, so the Shredder's rushing in towards the factory ship. Factory ship sends off this nuke, but the Shredder goes around it. Looks like Shredder's trying to line, it, line up a shot, but is struggling. 
Doesn't look like it has quite the mobility to get himself properly lined up. Oh, and the two nukes from the factory ship was just too much for the shredder. Factory ship wins the round. Okay, opening the round two, we have a nuke coming out of the factory ship, which was blown out of the sky by the shredder. We have the shredder taking tons of hits to the shields by the main cannons on the factory. But when the shredder hits, it hits hard, and it kills the factory ship in the second round. Going into the third round, we have the nukes coming out of the factory ship, which are quickly evaded by the shredder. But he does take a lot of hits as a result of that. So the Shredder is trying to go around the uh, main guns of the factory ship, but it looks like he's got a lot of nukes coming his way. He looks like he's also lost a couple of shields in the front, and the factory ship wins the round. Looks like the next ships we're going to have is the 10 minute versus the mini death ball. Alright, so we have the no shielding versus the uh, one shielding. Or the no armor versus the one shield and little armor. Which one do you think will win? Well, with the with the mobility of the mini death ball versus the medium speed of the 10 minute ship, I think the uh, mini death ball will be able to outmaneuver the 10 minute and be able to win the match. I agree. It also has a lot more missiles, which I think will overwhelm the 10 minute. Okay, look, in the beginning of the round, we have a ton of missiles coming out of the mini death ball, and it's trying to get him with those lasers. It just cut through the shields, cut him through the middle, and mini death ball wins the round. Okay, going into the round two, we have the 10 minute kind of rushing in, but he's like, nope, I'm just going to evade around that. Looks like the lasers on the mini death ball are shredding away at those shields of the 10 minute, and it cuts it right in half. Mini death ball wins the match. Going into the next match, we have the Box of Doom versus the Fighter Mew. All right, which of these two Tinkerel gun-bearing ships do you think will win? Um, with the extra mobility of the Fighter Mew, I think if he's able, if the Fighter Mew is able to keep its distance and um, use his main gun on the Box of Doom, I think he's going to win. But if it gets into the close quarter battle, I think those main heavy cannons on the Box of Doom is going to win. I think the Mew's probably going to have it because the limited number of missiles in the Box of Doom will more than likely be ineffective against the Fighter Mew due to its point defense capabilities. And I think that the Fighter Mew's Tinkerel guns being far, far more powerful will probably just obliterate the Box of Doom with its relatively slow speed and weak armor and shielding. Okay, jumping into round, we have the Fighter Mew firing off its first burst, but missing almost entirely. And then it fires off its second burst, also missing. And the Fighter Mew wins the round because it landed its shot, and that just shredded right through the Box of Doom's armor. Okay, looks like Fighter Mew's trying to keep its distance, and then just circles around the backside of the Box of Doom, tries to shoot off another burst, and just shreds it to pieces. Fighter Mew wins the round. Going into our finals match... Uh, we have the factory ship and the cruiser. All right, so for our first semifinals match, which do you think is going to win, the factory ship or the cruiser? Well, with the point defense of the cruiser and the big Tinkerel gun in the middle, no, not Tinkerel, the gauze cannons in the middle, I think that it's going to be able to shred through factory ship because it doesn't have any shields. So I'm going to have to put my money on the cruiser for this one. I'm thinking that the factory ship will probably win, as they are both sentinel ships, and the factory ship is bearing a nuke, whereas the cruiser is not. Okay, well, let's find out. Okay, so, the factory ship sends out its nuke in the beginning of the round, cruiser is trying to deal with it, but was not able to, and the factory ship wins the round. Okay, going into the second round, we have another nuke coming out of the factory ship, cruiser is trying to take it out, but it was just too powerful for the fact, I mean, for the cruiser so the factory ship wins the match for the next match we have the fighter mew versus the mini death ball all right so who do you think will win between the missiles and lasers and the main tinkro gun ship well both of these ships being highly maneuverable i think that the real thing that's gonna win here are gonna be those uh, main cannon on the fighter Mew because it will be rather hard for it to hit the mini death ball but when it hits it will just shred right through that thing I think it's going to cut it clean in half I think this is going to be a relatively close fight as both are amazing ships but I think that the mini death ball will have it due to the immense amount of missiles that it can put out and stop the fighter Mew while also being fast enough to evade many of the fighter Mew's shots 
Well, let's see what happens. Fundamere shoots off a couple of quick bursts on the mini death ball. Another and a little, little bit, a little bit of luck, and the mini death ball tears him to pieces with those missiles. Okay, now the Fundamere is kiting around, gets him with that main cannon, and Fundamere wins the second round. Okay, Fundamere sending out a couple of those quick bursts, but is getting his front shred off by the mini death ball, and mini death ball wins the match. Okay, going into our finals round, we have the mini death ball versus the factory ship. All right, so who do you think is going to win, the contestant mini death ball or the sentinel factory ship? Well, originally I was thinking the factory ship because of its nuke, but with the mobility of the mini death ball, I think that it will be able to evade those nukes and just keep pounding away at his armor with the missiles because the factory ship does not have any shields. So I think the mini death ball is going to win this one in the end. I think that you're right. Let's go ahead and find out. Okay, let's see. Mini Death Ball sending out that first layer of missiles, took out that nuke before it even got halfway to him, and the Mini Death Ball got him with those lasers cut right down the middle. For the second round, we have the Mini Death Ball sending out those missiles again, killed the nuke right where it stood, and sent out those missiles, and those missiles went right through the factory ship. Well, it looks like your winner for this week is going to be the Mini Death Ball. So... If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe to continue getting back to the basics. Also, next week's rules should be popping up on screen in about 3, 2, 1. So, the rules for next week are going to be no fly command modules. All faction parts are allowed. The max P for a ship is going to be 80. You cannot use a nuke, mostly because you can't afford it. The minimum P for a ship is going to be 5, which is... I think just the price of a command module, so I don't. You can't even make a ship with that much P. Yes, we're going to do P matching. Yes, you can use Tinkerel guns, and yes, you can struggle to try and make a spinner. Also, uh, we are going to have it where we are not going to be accepting any sort of just blocks of armor with a single gun. So let's try and uh, not be like Super Mini Number Four and be a giant block of armor. But other than that. That was, This has been your week's reassembly ship tournament, and see you next week. Alright, and if you enjoyed that video, go ahead and smack the subscribe button in the middle of your screen. If you want to see our latest video, click on the right. And if you want to watch a semi-related playlist, click on one of the two buttons to your left.